everybody! Welcome to the Good Evening Kitties podcast, a Tales from the Crypt review. My name is Melissa, your ghostess with the mostess, and today's episode is Season 5, Episode 3, Forever Ambergris. This episode is probably one of the more gory, bloody, icky, sticky, gooey episodes in the entire series. And I'm excited to talk about it, so here we go. It's a pretty uh, memorable one. I know it's a fairly popular one. And I think it's mostly because of all the special effects and just how gross some of the parts of the episode are. As always, John Kassir does the voice of the Crypt Keeper and Danny Elfman does the theme song. This episode aired October 2nd, 1993. It was directed by Gary Fletter, who also directed movies like Kiss the Girls, and he also did the Tales from the Crypt episode, season 4, episode 4, Seance. Which I did with my friend Sharissa, and you can go check that out, it's already out, so go give that one a listen. The screenplay for this episode was by Scott Rosenberg. This episode stars Roger Deltry, the founder of the rock band The Who. That's who he is. He's also been in some other stuff too, but that's mostly what you'd probably know him from. Steve Buscemi from TV's Boardwalk Empire and Ghost World and Portlandia, just being Steve Buscemi. It also stars Paul Dooley from movies like 16 Candles, Marshall Bell from movies like Total Recall, and Lisette Anthony from uh, TV's Hollyoaks. So I'm going to go ahead here and read the description on the back of the box for Forever Ambergris. Two war photographers love the same woman. Wait till you see how this picture develops. I mean, that one's pretty, uh, pretty vague, which I kind of like. I like when they leave it, you don't know what's going to happen. Because sometimes they, they do have a picture on this uh, back of the box here, though. Because it's a pretty bloody picture of Roger Daltrey uh, looking all gooey. So yeah, let's get into this episode. So it opens up. With the Crypt Keeper, of course. The Crypt Keeper intro. He's in his crypt. He's got like a fish <laughs> laying there. But he's also got a bunch of photography equipment and, re- and recording equipment. And I like it in this one because they show his hands. Like they start out showing his hands messing with all the photo equipment. And you can see that like he's got all these like gaps and holes in his hands. Like from the skin fading and, and breaking and stuff. And he's got some real wispy hair in this one. He's got the light pieces and things set up in the back for taking pictures. And he's got a little vest on for like going on a jungle trip because this is where this one's going to take us to the jungle. So yeah, it's got so many candles. It's a really nice uh, opening for the episode. And of course he's having, you know, good time with the puns. And, and instead of a Kodachrome camera, he calls it a Kodachrone. Get it? Oh my gosh. And he likes to snap off a few head shots. Oh, so fun. So this one opens up and it's a plane. There's a plane flying. There's a guy who's like a soldier or something. He's been hurt and he's reading a play- an old Playboy magazine. And it's just them on in like, I don't like those army kind of planes where it's not exactly a whole bunch of seating in there. It's not like a regular flight. Like it's other equipment and things because they're war photographers. So they go wherever the war is. So they're just kind of thrown in the back with all the equipment. And there's some guys and they're all talking, hanging out, playing checkers in the plane. And yeah, some guys have a lot of head wounds. Everyone's pretty hurt, looks like. It looks like it's been pretty rough. They all seem in good spirits, but yeah, they're all, everyone's got crutches or something. There's even a guy smoking, getting ready to light a cigarette. And then you see some camera equipment and it cuts to Roger Daltrey's character. Um, his name is Dalton. He's looking through some of Steve Buscemi's pictures and he, Steve Buscemi's character, um, whose name is Ike. Steve Buscemi is like the new guy. Like he's like the young budding photographer who wants to be like Dalton, who admires his work in taking all these amazing shots in these crazy places. Dalton is like an older photographer. He's supposed to be 45 in this, which got me thinking. I was like, well, how old are they in real life during this episode? Because it's kind of always hard to pinpoint Buscemi's age for me sometimes. Sometimes he can look real young and sometimes he doesn't. So I'm like, all right. And so I looked it up. And so at the time that this episode came out, um, Buscemi in real life is 36 and then Daltrey is 49. So it's not too far off. So he's, you know, he would be, if Dalton in the show was 45, it's, you know, because they were saying something about him being like 10 years behind or something like that, I think. They're just kind of hanging out on the plane, talking about different uh, travels and things and, and everything like that. And then so Dalton shows him some of his pictures and he's like, oh man, I know your pictures. Like, I have some of your pictures hanging in my bedroom. One was like of some Buddhist guy setting himself on fire and he's, I think he's got that in his bedroom. It's like, all right. So he's a really big fan of Dalton. So he like idolizes him. So that's something to kind of keep in mind because he trusts him because he idolizes him and you probably, maybe you shouldn't. So Dalton's kind of looking for a new opportunity to get some good pictures and things because he's starting to get older and I think he's starting to maybe lose his touch a little bit. 
Steve Buscemi's character, Ike, starts talking about his girlfriend. He's like, hey, I got these, like, incense spices. He always likes to bring back some for his girl. So Ike's like, hey, Dalton, why don't you come by me and my girlfriend's house or whatever? I mean, it could be his wife, I guess, but her name is Bobby. And he's like, come over. She she cooks really well. And, you know, you can come over for a nice home-cooked meal and stuff. And Dalton's like, well, there's all these girls waiting on the beaches of San Diego for me. Is that Bobby? Yeah, you really got to meet her sometime, Dalton. Hey, maybe this trip you can come by for dinner some night. Oh, come on. Back in the world for two weeks. All the girls on the beaches of San Diego waiting for me. I'm going to come and have a cozy dinner with you and your house, Frau. Well, look, you change your mind. Bobby's the kind of girl that can make you forget that shitstorm back there just by the way she crinkles her brow, I swear. Because he wants his idol there. He wants to hang out. He's excited. So Dalton's not really sure he's going to go to Ike's house. So then it cuts to Dalton. His name is Dalton Scott. It talks to him and he's talking to, like, I guess his boss or some guy at, like, a newspaper or wherever he's doing all the photography for. And so Dalton's trying to tell him, dude, I'm working on, like, a really big thing. I got this tip in Central America. There's something really special there. I could go get these pictures. And I'm going to go with this uh, military, like, mercenary unit that's going to hang out and, like, protect me. I'm going to go see all this crazy stuff. And so Ike, whose name is Isaac, you know, they call him Ike. The guy he's talking to, his boss or whatever, is like, well, have you heard of this guy Isaac, you know, or whatever? And he's like, his pictures are really cool. And so Dalton's like, okay, yeah, I guess they're all right, you know, whatever. So he's jealous is basically what this episode is about. There's usually some sort of running theme in these episodes, and this one is jealousy. So his boss is like, fine, you can go on this trip. I think you should take this new kid with you. And so he's like, fine. So he goes to Ike and Bobby's house for dinner. So now Dalton's at Ike and Bobby's and Bobby answers the door and she's cute. She's, you know, pretty and blonde and she really is, is really in love with Ike. I mean, he seems really sweet to her and stuff, but she seems like she's a really good person and, you know, is, is um, really into him and misses him and stuff. And so Steve Buscemi comes up and he's like, hey, what's up? Hey, I'm so excited you're here. Hey. And this part seemed a little weird to me because it did seem like they were kind of flaunting her. And I don't mean like the show. I mean, well, I mean, I guess because they wrote it that way, but it kind of, it's like almost like they're a little too flaunty in front of Dalton. Like, obviously Dalton's a little smitten with her a little bit. She doesn't seem like she's interested in him at all. But by the time the end of the dinner is even almost close to being done, like he, Dalton's still eating. They're all getting drunk. And there's so many candles lit around this house. So it's just like they're drunk. The candles are lit. Ike's dancing with Bobby for some reason, like in front of Dalton and just like they're having their own girlfriend, boyfriend thing over here. And Dalton's just watching them. Ike's grabbing her butt. And so now that Ike's going to go with Dalton and Dalton's kind of like his boss now to go do this trip, he's like, oh, Dalton, come and dance with my girl. Hey, Dalton, you want to dance with Bobby? Isaac. <laughs> come on, baby, dance with the guy. He's my boss. You have to. Come on, he hasn't seen blonde hair in three months. He's going nuts. Come on, Ike, I'm fine. What? It's all right. Just a little dance. I'm dance. It's okay. It's okay. Don't she don't dance. mind. Come on. Don't dance. Come on. You dance. Everybody dances. Bobby's a great dance. He'll show you how. I gotta pee. Is this okay with you? Yeah. He's drunk. He's home. And then Dalton, you know, is kind of already bit like, you know, he don't seem like he'd be the type of girl with him, and which she kind of doesn't, but they, they're cute enough together. But she's like, no, I'm totally into him. But then Dalton's still kind of like rub it on her back and stuff while they dance. And it's just awkward. It's awkward that this is all happening. I don't know why there's so many damn candles in this place. And so she's, she's not really having to fight Dalton's advances. She's more just defending Ike is what she's doing. She's like, he's, he's so brave and the things he does and he finds beauty and horrible things. And, you know, I just enjoy being with him. And they're just getting really trashed. So Dalton ends up staying the night because everyone's so trashed. And there's still candles and he's on the couch smoking weed. So he's, yeah, he's smoking a little weed and laying on the couch, hanging out. Ike and Bobby are going at it. I guess it's been like the first night that Ike's been back. So I think it's the same day still. So it's like he hasn't seen her in a while. But it's like they're back there, not super noisily, but they're, there's a guest here. Like everyone is still, Bobby's not that drunk. No one seems to care. Dalton thinks it's funny. He's laying on the couch. And so he decides to get up and go take a peep and see what's going on. Walking by about 700 candles as he heads over drinking some wine to go see what's going on. So he heads down the hallway and he kind of takes a peep in. Ike and Bobby are having sex and uh, there's a mirror so you can see a real good shot and everything. And he's just like, yeah. And so she sees, she sees Dalton looking in the mirror, looking at them while they're doing the thing. And then she's like, oh no. And she's like all shy. She doesn't stop. And she's like all shy. So later she comes out after um, Ike falls asleep and she's just in like, 
only her underwear and a long sleeve shirt that's open. And she comes out. Yeah, she's looking for a joint. So she gets a joint out of this little um, tin that they have on top of the fridge and she's lighting it up. I guess she assumes that Dalton's sleeping, but he's not. He comes up behind her and scares her. And he's like, hey, what's up? And she's like, you want some? And he's like, all right, woo. And so he says he hasn't smoked it for a while. I thought that's what he was smoking earlier, but I guess not. So it's just a really weird borderline it's hard to tell if they're flirting or what, but she seems kind of pissed. She's like, do you normally like to watch people do that? Since you're a photographer and you like to watch things, you know? But he's also like hitting on her now. Like now that they're getting a little high and drunk, he's hitting on her. He's like touching her face. He's like, what if he wouldn't come back sometime? And she goes, that would be horrible. I would probably die myself. Now those lines, you don't think about it now, but that line is very important. The fact that she says what she says, you want to keep that in mind. Basically, she's not interested. She says out in front, like to his face, to Dalton's face, I worship Isaac. So take care of him for me on this trip. I love him. So leave me alone. <laughs> you're, just, you're weird. So now it cuts to the jungle of Central America or yeah, wherever they're at. So they're, uh, yeah, Central America. So they're flying over there. And so while they're on the plane and Steve Buscemi character is sleeping, Dalton comes over to this other dude and he's like, hey, I really got to get some good shots while we're here or something. I need like a, a break or something because so, if not, I'm going to be stuck taking high school graduation photos. I'm starting to lose my touch or whatever. So this guy's like, well, there's a place. I hear nice things about Bamalera. Bamalera? It's a campesino village. It was. There's nothing left of it now. Where it is, it makes me lie. look like a junior prom. Of course, that's strictly classified. Is that it? None of the campesinos killed were shot or fragged. They found canisters here. That ain't gonna be easy to get to. Oh, it'll be easy to get to. It just ain't gonna be easy to leave. The village is contaminated. Joe Wolfe. Dalton, you go to Vamalera. You take your pictures, and you don't come back. And he's like, Valmalera. And he's like, yeah, it's this village. Or it was, and there's nothing left of it. But they also weren't shot. So it's like, it's kind of like, you're not sure what's going on. Um, they, there's rumors that the village has been contaminated. It's not even like they got taken out by anything. Dalton gets this idea that he's going to send Ike into this village to take these pictures, not telling him that there's some sort of contamination or infectious disease or something. And so now they're in the jungle, they've gotten off the plane, they're with these mercenaries who are um, helping the system, and, and Ike's just taking pictures everywhere, he's so excited. They got all the, like, the stuff that you use to, like, blend into the jungle, and there's guys with guns, and they're sitting around a fire. There's a guy named Salucci who doesn't really care for Dalton, saying that, like, he, he just will sell himself out or sell anyone out to make everyone, like, promoting horrible things kind of thing to get money. You know, he doesn't like the way he sells out to make money on these pictures. As, like, he has no humanity. It's a little different than Ike, I think, but Dalton has a history of not being super, uh, uh, I guess the word would be compassionate with his photos. So they're talking a little bit about this, this village, and they're like, well, if you want to take pictures of dead bodies, it looks like a lot of them have been, like, run through, like, a blender. Like, it's not pretty. Everything's real bad. You know, <laughs> like, you maybe it shouldn't go there. Everyone's real dead. He's like, Dalton's like, I'm going to go head out to this village or whatever. He's getting his stuff together. And Ike's like, well, what about what's going on? And he's like, you know, someone's got to go with the mercenaries and get some combat shots. But Ike, being the little eager beaver, is like, oh, man, I'd, I'd really like to go out there. So then Dalton's immediately coming at him like, oh, what? You trying to step on my stuff? And this is what I wanted to do. And, and you're going to take this away from me. How dare you? And then Steve Buscemi's like, no, man, seriously. It's an opportunity for me, you know, and we could share the shots. So he's like, share the shots. He's like making a whole big scene, you know, in front of everybody. So Dalton starts to walk away and then time passes. And then he's like, you know what? Go, go to this village and take pictures. Get it good. We'll share the shots. You're right. It's a good opportunity. So he's basically tricking Ike, right? You go. Hey, I'm sorry, man. Go. You're right. You can capture it much better than me. You can share. So go get it, Ike. Get it good. Thanks, Dalton. Change of plans, men. I'm coming with you. Ike's going to Vamalera. You're sending him alone? Yeah, well, you can send one of your guys with him if you like. 
It makes you feel better since Salucci. Fuck you. The Salucci goes with us. But you run into anything, you lay chili. And you get back here, Didi Mao. Hey, I'll be cool. I'll shoot him with this. So then they just send off, it's like just shot of just Ike, Stevie Shimmick's character with all his gear on and a map. And he's like, okay, bye guys. And like all six of the other guys take off one way. And he's like, bye, I'm just innocent and, and nice. I'm going to go take these combat pictures. And there's just a village. I don't know what's going on there, but hey. And so he just heads off in the opposite direction all by himself. No one was with them, probably because, I mean, they know there's a rumor about it being really dangerous and contaminated, so they don't want to go. I guess they don't care if he goes. So yeah, so Ike's excited he gets to go. So he goes to Valmalera, and he comes back later that night. And so it cuts back later that night, and the mercenaries are coming back. Just so many bullets, just bullets that they're carrying everywhere. Bullets and machine guns and bags. And Dalton's come back, and he's all sweaty. They've had a, a long day taking combat shots and just trying to stay safe. And there's a fire already back at the campsite, meaning Ike has gotten back. So Ike is back already from his trip. And he's hanging out inside their little hut or whatever. Um, there's like a little, like, not like a lean-to, but it's like a little cabin made of sticks kind of thing that Dalton and Ike are sleeping in on these like little cots or whatever. And so Dalton comes into the room and Ike's like, oh, hey, man, where you? I thought I was wondering where you guys have been. I've been hanging back out here for a while. It's been crazy. And he's like, it was crazy, man. He's like, whatever artillery hit these people, it was nuts. He's like... These bugs were crazy. It smelled like burning. No one really thought to tell him it wasn't exactly artillery. Like, these people were sick. And we, <laughs> we're going to find out real soon just how sick they were. It's like, I got some great shots. They're so good. And Dalton's acting kind of weird. I think he's afraid he's contagious because, like, I touched him and he's like, what? But Ike seems fine. He's like, hey, what's up, you know? But he has this line here where he's like, war might be hell, but it sure makes you sleep good. And that's his line right before he goes to sleep. So everybody goes to sleep. It's been a long day. Great. Here's where the shit hits the fan. So in the middle of the night, he wakes up to screaming. Dalton wakes up to screaming. And this is when everything gets crazy. So I come shooting up out of the bed. And he's screaming about how it's burning. He's screaming. His skin is just like burning. It's blistering. He's got his shirt open. He's, he's like almost seizing. It's so hot. He takes a drink of water from Dalton's canteen. He ends up vomiting all over the place, just like all over the floor or whatever. Dalton's like, oh, what the shit, you know? And so it's just real gross. It's already gooey. Steve Buscemi's character is sweating on this cot. Dalton comes running outside like, oh man. And the guy, the mercenaries are like, what? He's got a, and they're like, he's got a fever and everything. He's, it's crazy. It's crazy. The mercenary's like, let me see. And he's like, no, no, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Like Dalton's like, crap, he got whatever it was already. Like this thing moves fast. This disease moves fast. So Dalton's like, I'll take care of it. But the mercenary's like, well, what about a medic? And it's like, why haven't, why is no one getting a medic? As if it could do, the medic could do anything. Because now they cut back to Ike and it's even worse. Now he's bleeding where all these wounds were from the burn. It's just bleeding. There's blood coming out of his mouth. He's screaming. He's in so much pain. He's just sweating everywhere. There's the vomit on the floor. It's just like real nasty. And this has happened real quick. It's only been a couple hours, I think, that he's been asleep. And he was fine before. And then they're like, you know what? We can get you to this other town in like eight hours. Just hang on. And then Dalton is now kind of rubbing it in. He's smoking a cigarette. And he's like, you look like shit. Because he's like, yeah, I was right. Good. This, is, this place was diseased. And now you're going to go and I'm going to get your pictures. And I don't know why none of the mercenaries are coming in to bust in there. They hear screaming. And he, Ike's pulsating. Like, every, like they, they did really well on the gooiness. His eyeball, like above his eye, is pulsating and everything. And Dalton's just rubbing it in like, haha, I got your pictures. You know, and who's going to look after that sweet girl of yours? I'm going to look after her. And he's just panicking. And like I said, his eye is just pulsating. And he just, he's melting is basically what it is. The gore in this episode is insane. Oh God, I forgot about that part. Oh my God. Oh my God. How is he not panicking? So Dalton's just sitting here in the cabin, smoking a cigarette, laughing. And then, so remember how I said the eyeball was pulsing? So then Ike turns towards Dalton and he's just like screaming with his mouth open and they have this like dummy thing that's all gooey and then his eye just falls out and it just <laughs> falls out while he's screaming and Dalton's still like, ha ha ha, yeah, I got your pictures. Like I still would be like, I'm way too close to you right now. I don't want you to even breathe in my vicinity. I mean, why would you not think he would maybe come at you or something? And Dalton's still just like, ha ha, you're melting. And then he leans down and he sticks the cigarette into, into Ike's eyeball that is laying on the ground. I mean, watch the episode if you like a lot of goo, because he is melting. He's just laying there, melting, his eye has fallen out. Still, the mercenaries are not coming. Everyone's like, it's fine. Dalton said he's got it. So that morning, 
the mercenary guys are outside smoking cigarettes and talking and hanging out in the jungle or whatever. No one is still checking on Ike. Now Dalton's out there with them. Like, no one gives a shit. Like, everyone's just like, it's fine. And so that's when Dalton's finally like, oh, I think he picked up something in Valmalera. He's just saying he has a fever. He hasn't said, you know. And that Salucci guy's like, oh, how interesting that he got that from going there when you sent him there or whatever. And then all of a sudden, out comes Ike. Echo Company, 3rd Battalion, Contienne. And one night he gets a small case of the rot. Woke up in the morning, a bugs had eaten his nose off. Spent the rest of the day combing the deep, hairy bush for bugs. And every bug he'd find, he'd cut it open. Looking to put his nose back together. I think he must have picked up something in Vamalero. Yeah, I bet he did. Amazing, isn't it, how it could have been you? Jesus fucking Christ. He goes to, like, point at Dalton. His hand just melts and falls off. So Dalton grabs one of the guns and shoots Ike and kills him. And all the guys are standing around like, oh, he's stinky. You know, just, like, looking at him, holding their noses. And then Dalton's kind of trying to act like it was, like, self-defense. Like, oh, he was coming at us and he was sick. And it's like, Salucci's definitely, this other guy, Salucci, he's definitely not buying it. They're like, well, we can't risk contamination. They're like, well, what do we do, Sarge? What do we do with Ike's body? So they burn him. They burn Ike. Dalton's flying back on this plane. He's looking through all the pictures. He's laughing, looking with a little jeweler's eye or whatever. Like, yeah, these are great. Takes him to his boss. And the boss, like, is not even looking horrified, but he's like, oh, I've never seen such horror. This is horrible. And now Dalton's in a suit. He's like, yeah, I'm back. And like, too bad about Isaac that he died. He's like, oh, yeah, so tragic. Uh, tragic. Dalton has the gall, has the guts, has the narcissism or whatever to have dinner over at Bobby's and brings her flowers, I guess, and kind of like paying respects. And she's in like this uh, cute like little jumper thing, like shorts or whatever. And again, there's like a bajillion candles and he's in his suit and he looks like he's like a used car salesman, like it's gross. Not that all they're all gross, but you know what I mean? Like he's got the greasy hair, like the old Cadillac man kind of thing. Anyway, so they're at the table and they're drinking wine or whatever and talking and she goes up and gets something and she gets this postcard that has come from that just came yesterday from the jungle or whatever, from Isaac. She's like, it's so weird. I just got this postcard from Isaac. It's crazy. And she's pouring wine. And she's taking, you know, taking the flowers that he brought her. And she's like, it was weird reading this postcard, knowing that it was written by a dead man. I'm so grateful you gave it, gave him his last assignment. She's, t I mean, she's not super sad acting. She's more pissed acting. And she's just like, did he suffer? And he's like, no, he went very peacefully. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, so peacefully, screaming and bleeding to death. So she's like, I got this letter that came with this postcard and packages. And he's like, she's like, it was a real weird letter about how you sent him to this village knowing that he'd get sick. And how he took the pictures and you didn't. And he's like, that's so weird, you know, and that after he was sick that you shot him dead. After he was sick, you shot him dead. It was from a Dominic Salucci. I didn't believe it. I still don't. So she says it's Salucci. She's like, this was from Dominic Salucci's and I didn't believe it and I still don't. And he sent me this weed or something from this, from there or whatever. So she sits down next to him with this joint and she lights it up. And then she puts it over in Dalton's mouth and he, you know, smokes the pot. She's like, I, I know you bullied him, but I know you really loved Isaac. And then they kiss, and he's like, right before they kiss, he's like, yeah, I loved him like a brother. And I'm like, no, no, you didn't. You've known him for like three days or something. Like, okay, so then they're kissing. He's falling for this real easily. So now it's them getting ready to, to do it. All right, so he's laying her down on the bed. How he hasn't caught on that she's completely fine with all this. Like, that she's just so easily like, yep, never mind, even though I said I'd love him so much. And he's... You know, he's just, he's sloppy. Anyway, so he's just all over her. 
And she's just like, yeah, you killed Isaac. You killed my Isaac. And then she rolls him over and she's on top of him. And she's like, whatever he had, that disease he had. And as she's saying this, you can see her back because she's on top of him. You can see her back starting to like, like there's vein things moving up of it and stuff like that. Like it's something spreading kind of thing inside of her. And she's like, whatever he had, we have now. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? And apparently it was like in that weed or something like that got sent back. And I guess since she said she would never live without him or die without, she would die without him, they smoked it. So because they smoked it, they both have this disease now. And as she's banging him, she starts to like melt in things like, and he's like, what? What are you talking about? And what I don't get about this is she should be in pain. She's acting like she's having a great time. I don't know if she's just really excited because she's killing him and she's happy to know that. She's screaming, but not necessarily in pain. And I'm like... Why is she so amorous right now? She should be like, oh god, it burns. But she's like, no, we dying together. Whoop, whoop. And she, her back, like, there's like this burst of blood and stuff. And it's gross. And so, like, her face is starting to melt. And there's blood running down her neck. She's all pulsating. It's really gross. Like, she's just pulsating. And there's blood shooting out of her back. And she's, it's just happening really fast. Like, it wasn't even that long ago they smoked it. And so she's just, like, falling apart. And he's freaking out. And there's blood all over. And he's like, no, no. And he's trying to wipe it off with the sheets. He's covered in her blood. And the blood's flicked everywhere. He's coming in the bathroom trying to wash it off like that's going to do anything. And so he's washing his hands. And then this, something falls into the sink. And he looks up and it's his nose. His nose has fallen off because he has the disease. So he's screaming like, no. Which is, like, similar to a story they talked about earlier with this rot. And so that's the end of the episode. So she got revenge for Isaac's death and nobody wins. I mean, maybe the boss guy because uh, Dalton's boss guy still has the pictures, but still. So that's the end of that episode. It cuts to the Crypt Keeper and there's a skeleton lady on her side with like a <laughs> blonde wig and a little polka dot bathing suit on, like a pink polka dot bathing suit. And um, the Crypt Keeper's taking pictures of her and he's just like talking, doing puns and taking pictures and doing like a centerfold of this chick. And, uh, yeah, just having a good time. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, you're so punny. And the best Crypt Keeper pun is... You'll be pleased to know, kitties, that things turned out pretty well for Bobby. She got herself a job and started modeling for Victoria's Secrets. <laughs> uh, Victoria's Secret. Goria. I mean, a lot of gore in this one, yeah. So it's pretty appropriate. So, yeah, that's the end of that one. Season 5, Episode 3, Forever Ambergris. There is a little bit of trivia from IMDb. The infection that Ike has is called miliaria. And I looked it up because I was like, that almost sounds like it's real. And it is real. It sounds like a military malaria is what it sounds like. But miliaria is actually just another word for heat rash. He had a lot more than that, but I was like, that's cute. At least it was something. So also, the title Forever Ambergris is a reference to the 1947 drama Forever Amber, the original comic story this episode was adapted from, Ambergris played an important part in the story's ending. Since this element, the Ambergris itself, was excised from the adaption, this title makes little sense. And if you don't know what Ambergris is, I will tell you. Because it had nothing to do with this episode, but in the original story it did. Ambergris can also be pronounced other ways. I think Ambergris, Grey Amber, it's got a bunch of different names. It's a solid, waxy, flammable substance of a dull gray or blackish color produced in the digestive system of sperm whales. If it's freshly produced, it smells like a marine fecal odor. It used to be pretty expensive. Like, you could get good money for it, I think. Yeah, it can be worth thousands, but it's illegal because of um, endangering sperm whales, obviously. But yeah, it's just like this waxy thing that they make in their digestive system. People like the smell. I don't know. I don't know I'm looking at some of the pictures on my phone. It's kind of pretty. There's also kind of a fun episode of Bob's Burgers about that, if you ever want to check it out, about Ambergris. The kids find some, or something like that. It's kind of cute. Again, Season 5, Episode 3, Forever Ambergris. The next episode is Season 5, Episode 4, Food for Thought. Thank you all so much for downloading and listening to this episode. And if you'd like to email me with any questions or comments, you can email me at goodeveningpod at gmail.com. There's also a Facebook page you can follow, and there's a Twitter page you can follow at Gek Podcast or at G-E-K Podcast. You can find the podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. I've said the word podcast quite a bit right now. I'm going to keep this all in. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Also, I like reviews. I think you can write them in on Podcast Republic, Facebook, Apple Podcast, 
I get a kick out of them. They help me out. I really like it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for listening and have a good one.